Smyrna is about 35 miles north of Ephesus and was prosperous thanks to its harbor on the Aegean Sea and its location at the end of a major trade route through Asia Minor. It was first settled around 3000 BC and it's the reputed birthplace of Homer. The Agora was the city's administrative, political, judicial, and commercial center. It measured 260 feet by 400 feet, but also had large basement areas with additional shops. A number of these subterranean passages are open for the public to explore even though some were being worked on. One spring-fed fountain was still operating. Um, but we can make some assumptions uh, based on when it was, when Christianity came to Smyrna. Uh, Acts 19.10, as we've seen, we talked about Epaphras being trained up by Paul, being sent out to Laodicea, to Colossae, uh, to Hierapolis, that we've, that we've seen previously. And we've seen the distance we traveled from Ephesus, where we were yesterday, to where we are today. And so most um, Christian historians make the assumption, we don't know the name, we don't know if it was Paul himself, but it was most likely a disciple of Paul, and started the church here in Sardis first came to prominence during the first millennium BC when it served as the center of the powerful Lydian kingdom, which encompassed most of the western half of Asia Minor. All part of the Roman avenue can be seen where we are walking. The rest is buried beneath the hillside and the adjacent road. But these shops are very interesting as well. There are a total of uh, 27 shops here. Of these 27 shops, two-thirds approximately uh, are, were owned by Christians or Jews. How do they know they were owned by Christians and Jews? Because of things that were found inside of the shops. Um, menorahs, crosses, and things like that. So. This partially restored 3rd century AD synagogue is the largest known synagogue outside Palestine from ancient times. Entrance to the synagogue was through this forecourt, which had a fountain and then mosaics on the floor. Three doors then led into the main hall, which measured about 200 feet long by 60 feet wide. Here's a shot looking back in the other direction towards those three doors. The floors and the walls had elaborate decorations of mosaic and marble. On the other side of the synagogue wall is the gymnasium bath complex, which covers five and a half acres. The several acres of grass was used as an exercise area. They would then proceed through this marble court, which has been partially restored. This structure was reconstructed by Harvard University between 1960 and 1971 from about 800 fragments found in the area. Here you get an idea of what it looked like when the marble was on the walls. The bricks with the numbers were original stones. Proceeding through the marble court, you come to four baths. One cold, two warm, and one hot. It's a 
140 AD that Sardis uh, eventually got the, this, this term that they were longing to have and actually uh, Smyrna beat them out in AD 25. Sardis finally got it in AD 140, the, the Neocoros uh, designation, the Temple of Keeper. And this was for the Temple of Artemis across the street we were going there. The Temple of Artemis is the fourth largest Ionic temple in the world and one of the seven largest of all Greek temples. It is about 300 feet long and 160 feet wide. The temple was begun around 300 BC but was never completed. As planned, there would have been 78 columns. Indicative of the huge changes that swept across the diminishing Roman Empire was the building of this Christian church in the then unused site of Artemis' temple in the late 4th century AD.